Okay, here's a another type of differential equations problem. Um, it's called Newton's Law of Cooling. If you were one of my students, then um, <clears throat> don't worry too much, especially if you're an AB, about the name Newton's Law of Cooling. Um, that's really just up there for the random passerbys on the internet who happen to see this. But uh, this problem, you will need a calculator, so get your calculator out and ready. Uh, Newton's Law of Cooling problems will look like this. Um, what Newton's law cools, cooling says that if you take something, like in this case we're taking a cake out of the oven and we're setting it on the counter, um, the rate that the cake cools is directly proportional K times the temperature difference between the room and uh, that of the cake. So this differential equation is the model for Newton's law of cooling. Um, let's see, so we have a cake, we baked it at 400 degrees, we took it out of the oven, we set it on the counter so it could cool off, the temperature of the cake as it sits on the counter changes according to this differential equation. Um, T is the cake, uh, temperature of the cake measured in degrees Fahrenheit. T is time measured in minutes. Um, and then it says after one hour of setting it on the counter, you see that its temperature is 140 degrees. Okay, before we start solving, the first thing I want you to do is solve the differential equation. But before we start solving, you want to identify whatever your initial conditions are and what all's given. In this problem, I was nice because I straight up gave you the differential equation. Um, other people, if you're not one of my students, you could have been um, just told that it was a Newton's law of cooling, or they could have given you other, other information, you would have to set it up yourself, but I'm being nice. Um, the one condition that I pretty explicitly gave you is this one right here. One hour after setting it on the counter, you find that its temperature is 140 degrees. And now you do have to be careful because I told you that T is measured in minutes and this is one hour. So what we know here is that the temperature after one hour or 60 minutes is 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, that is a condition that we will use to solve for a constant. Another condition which I didn't explicitly give you um, is the initial temperature. We are baking the cake at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. In problems like this, it is safe to assume that the initial temperature of the cake when you first pull it out of the oven is going to be the same temperature as the oven. That's kind of the point of baking it, is that the cake can achieve the same temperature that's in the oven. Um, so we will take this and we will say that we know the initial temperature, the time after zero minutes, is going to be 400 degrees. Okay, so we have those two conditions. And then part A is simply to solve the differential equation. So here we're going to separate and integrate. Uh, first thing we'll do to separate is divide by the 68, let me scroll down some, divide by the 68 minus T, so D big T, and keep your T straight, um, over 68 minus big T is equal to, and I'm going to leave the K on this side, DT. We will find the antiderivative of both sides. And remember, on the AP exam and on my test, it is vital that you show the uh, separation step, because if you don't show that se step of separation, you won't get any points at all. Um, the antiderivative of the right side is easy, but you have to be careful. This is a dt problem. k is a constant. So the antiderivative is simply kt plus some constant. On the left side, it's almost a natural log. The antiderivative, or the derivative of 68 minus t is negative 1. If I put a negative 1 up there and a negative 1 here, now my top is the derivative of the bottom. So my antiderivative is the negative natural log of 68 minus t. Uh, and then at this point, I like to solve for my big T. I'm going to go ahead and solve this. Uh, before you do E, you have to have ln completely by itself. So I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 1. So I have the ln of 68 minus T is equal to multiply both sides by negative 1. That will be negative KT. And I'm going to go ahead and say plus C because we don't know if C is positive or negative. Um, and Likewise, we could have just kept the k positive, but we're multiplying both sides by negative 1 to get rid of that negative. Uh, now that I have the ln completely by itself, now I will make both sides exponents on e, and that will give me 68 minus t is equal to e to the negative kt plus c, and I like to write that as a e to the negative kt. <clears throat> uh, then I will solve for my t, move the 68 over, uh, we'll change the signs, and t is going to ultimately be 68 minus a 
e to the negative kt. Okay, so now we have solved the differential equation. However, we have two constants to solve for. We have a and we have k, and that's why we have two initial conditions. Um, we have t of 0 and t of 60. We use those to solve for your constants. And I always start with my 0 one. The 0 one's the easiest to plug in. So I know that t of 0 was 400, and we will solve, use that to solve for a. So if T of 0 is 400, that means 400. My temperature is equal to 68 minus A, E to the negative K. And I'm plugging in 0 for T. Um, e to the 0 is just 1. So 400 equals 68 minus A times 1. And you'll end up getting A to be 332. So now I can rewrite my equation. T equals 68 minus 332. A is negative 332. Sorry, I had to think about that for a second. I didn't think that looked right. A ends up being negative 332. So when you plug that in, minus the negative makes it plus 332 e to the negative kt. So we got one constant out of the way. Now we go to our other condition, t of 60 equals 140, and we'll use that to solve for k. So now I'm going to say, OK, well, t of 60, I'll come up here and do this. Make sure I have room. t of 60 is equal to 140 degrees. So after one hour, it cooled to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so that means that my temperature, 140, is equal to 68. Only now we know it's plus 332 e to the negative kt, e to the negative k. Only now we know that t is 60. And we're going to solve that. So uh, let's solve that real quick. And this is where calculators are going to come in handy. All right. So took some time to get that. So we, we subtract 68, we divide by 332, and, and that'll reduce 18 over 83. Now that I have E completely by itself, we will take the natural log of both sides. So the natural log of 18 over 83 is equal to, and the natural log of E to stuff is just the stuff. And then we will divide by negative 60, divide by negative 60. And we will get a k value of, and we'll punch that in the calculator. And um, just to remind you what happens when you plug this in the calculator. So I'm plugging all of this in the calculator here. When you hit enter, um, the inspires and the 89s and some fancy calculators will default to the exact answer, which you can write that. That's OK. We just needed to solve for k. Um, but I want the decimal, so I'm going to hit control enter to force the decimal answer, and you get k to be 0 0.025, and I'll go ahead and write 0255, 0 0.0255. Now remember, we will probably use this later, and on these problems, it is very important for you to store your answer. So now that I have an answer, I'm going to hit Control Store, and since that was k, I will store that for k, hit Enter, and now if I need to recall that answer anytime later in the problem, then I can just hit k. So I'm going to make a note to myself, this is stored as k in the calculator. Uh, and then to finally kill part A, it said find the uh, solution or solve the differential equation. I now write my final solution as 68 plus 332 e to the negative k, which was negative 0.0255t. And that's the solution. That's the solution for this first question. Good, good? Good, good? All right. Um, next part. Um, says find the temperature of the cake after 30 minutes. Well, that's not going to be too bad because we just found a solution. So I'm going to say my temperature after 30 minutes, and do pay attention to units. Um, time is supposed to be measured in minutes. If time was measured in hours, then we'd have to convert this to hours, or, or 0.5. Uh, and we'll just throw this into the solution we just got. So let me copy our solution here. Where is it? There it is. I'll bring that over and copy that up here so we can see the solution. And T of 30 is going to be whatever, 68 plus 332 e to the negative 0 0.0255 times 30 is. Um, only remember that we stored our k, our k value as k in the calculator. So I'll just say e to the negative 30 k. And I'm thinking ahead of what the answer might be. If you remember, after it sat out for an hour, the temperature was 140. So I expect my temperature to be somewhere between 140 and 400. If I get something that's not in that temperature range, then we know we're wrong. Um, so after an hour, it cooled to 140. So after 30 minutes, it's not going to be that cool yet. So let's punch that in the calculator real quick. 
Alright, and um, I paused it while I punched it in. This is exactly why you want to anticipate your answer, because if I wasn't thinking, I would have written this down. I punched in 68 um, plus 332e to the 30k, and I got 780 degrees, which doesn't make sense because it was 400 when we pulled it out. And what I forgot is that the value of k that I stored was positive 0 0.0255, so I need to go back up and edit my entry here. Oh, geez, what did I just do? What I do? Undo. Undo. There we go. Um, there we go. I just need to go back and make that negative 30 times k because the negative was not part of my answer. So hit that. There, that makes a lot more sense. So we get point, or 222.609 degrees. All right, much better. Okay, now the last part. You can ice the cake once it cools to a temperature of 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Icing it too soon will result in melted icing, which sucks, and you don't want that because then it all just runs to the sides and the middle of it, which is a little bit taller. Is anyway, um, so after how many minutes can you safely ice the cake? So we need the cake to reach a temperature of 90 degrees. So we will say 90 is equal to 68 plus 332 e to the negative 0 0.0255 times t. We're solving for t this time. After how many minutes, and I did say minutes, so we're still safe with our units, can you safely ice the cake? And we will solve this. I'm not a fan of the solve feature in the calculators. Um, I'm going to do as much of this by hand as I can. I'll subtract by, I'll subtract, I'll subtract 68 first, and that'll give me 22 equals, I'll go ahead and divide by 332. Divided by 332 equals e to the negative 0.0255t. Take the natural log of both sides. So the ln of 22 over 332 equals negative 0.0255t. And then finally, my value of t would be whatever the natural log of 22 over 332 divided by negative 0255 is and we'll throw that in the calculator and again use your stored value um, so for me this thing in the bottom is actually negative k because I stored 0.0255 for k and I'll throw that in the calculator real quick and there's our answer so I threw that in the calculator and I got 106.5416 so that equals 106.54 and now I forgot 5416. Now remember on the AP exam and on my test, t uh, answers must be accurate to the third decimal. Um, you could write 0 0.5416. Um, this is one of those cases where they would accept 106.542 or 106.5416. And all of these, that is, those are in minutes. And that makes sense because we knew that after 60 minutes it was 140 degrees. So after another 46 minutes, it lowers down to 10, uh, to 90 degrees. Uh, so there you go. And the last thing I want to stress on this is it's important for you to store your values of K because if you don't store them, like on this problem, um, this may blow up in my face. I should have tested this first. But on these types of problems, the differential equations ones, if you don't store your value, if I did negative 0.0255 and I punched that in, I'm anxious to see how many minutes it says if you don't use a rounded value, and it's 106.435. You are supposed to be accurate to the third decimal, and this is an example of where storing your answer is important because it gives you a much different answer than if you use a rounded value. So make sure you're storing your answers. If you don't like to store, then write down at least 10 decimals to make sure you're accurate to your third decimal place. It's a lot easier to store. So there you go. That is um, a differential equations problem that you might see on a test or on the AP exam or somewhere in life, like while you're out drinking with your buddies or something. I don't know. Should I say that? This is a high school video. No, drinking Capri Suns. Yes, that's what you drink with your buddies, Capri Suns.